good morning and welcome to church whether you're here in person or you're joining us online today. Once again, I'm very thankful to have the Reverend Jim Campbell here today providing cover and leading our worship. And then next Sunday, the, Rev, the Reverend Dr. Donald Patton will be joining us. Can I ask you to please continue to pray for Jeff uh, while he is on sick leave? And please do direct any pastoral items in the meantime, either through to myself or via the church office. So some announcements today and what might be uh, termed to be a bit better news to do with the COVID restrictions. So first of all, PCI have advised uh, that we can once again remove our face masks while we're seated. Um, so that means while you're here in church, you can. I can see a few people already reaching to take those off. Uh, we do need to put them back on for singing and for coming into church and leaving church. Uh, another thing, uh, again, in a positive note, is this week we've got lots of our organizations resuming again. So tomorrow night, GB, I think it's the older girls, yes. Uh, then Tots and Toddlers starts again on Tuesday morning, Football and Fellowship on Wednesday. And then on Thursday evening, that's the third period at half seven, is PW. And there are two speakers, not just one this month, but two. Uh, Mary McCauley from the PW Link and also Olive Turkington. She's coming along with a talk and a quiz. And it's on the topic of give a girl the right shoes. Maybe that rings true for a few of our ladies. So can we encourage as many as possible uh, of the ladies to come along and feel free to bring a friend as well. Then from next Sunday, we're going to resume tea and coffee, something that we've missed in recent weeks. If you'd like to volunteer to help, I'm sure Nola would be very happy to receive any more helpers on that rota. Just to mention thanks for the drop off on Thursday for all the items received. Also that the UCB for today is available for collection. You'll have seen on the screen just a little reminder about today being a day of prayer and that's something that the moderator has called for, to continue to pray for those affected by the pandemic. So our birthday spot. There's a number of birthdays, I'm just having a little look around church today, a number of birthdays in this coming week. Uh, we've got James Smith, Jonathan Orr, Tom Blair. I'm looking over in Stuart's direction, a birthday this week. He's just put his head down. And it's also Kirsty's birthday. Kirsty's watching online this morning uh, because she hasn't been well this week. And I've been given permission by her husband to mention that it is her 40th birthday. It's good to disclose this information. So let's pray for those folk. Dear Lord, this morning we come with thankfulness for all those celebrating birthdays this week. For James, Jonathan, Tom, Stuart and Kirsty. We thank you for what they mean to their family and friends and for what they mean to us as a church family. And Lord, we give thanks for what they mean to you. Father, we ask for your blessing in their lives today and in the year ahead. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Lovely to be with you again this morning, and uh, happy birthday, Kirsty. I wish I could remember my 40th birthday. Oh, boy, that would be great. Let me just begin by reading some uh, verses from the Psalms. The psalmist says this to us, praise the Lord, praise the name of the Lord, praise him ye servants of the Lord, praise the Lord for the Lord is good, sing praise to his name for that is pleasant. So we're going to come now, even with the restrictions of, of, of a mask, 
Uh, and praise is not determined by how loudly we sing, but by the spirit of our hearts as we want to express our love and our thanksgiving to God for who he is and for all that he has done in our lives. And our opening uh, item of praise is really a prayer. It's that prayer that as we gather together in God's presence, that he would speak into each of our lives. So we stand together to sing, Speak, O Lord. God is here. We are here to meet with him and we talk to him together now in prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for that amazing promise that where two or three are gathered in your name, we're where there's just a handful of us wanting to know you and to draw near to you, you are to be found in our midst. 
Lord, it is our desire this morning that we would meet with you. We are not simply here to go through a, a, a familiar routine, a well-oiled machine, and to leave and think, well, that's it done, we have done our bits. We want to encounter you. We want to hear your voice speaking into the very depths of our being. We thank you that you know each one of us individually. You know the struggles that we're having in our lives at this moment. You know the things that are challenging us. You know the things that are perhaps distracting us and drawing our hearts from you. And so speak, O oh Lord. We know that you alone have the words of eternal life. So make yourself known to us in a very personal way. And encourage us, each one, in our trust and belief in you. Lord, we come recognizing that as we ask these things, we can't demand them of you. You are holy and we are not. You are perfect and we are not. You are without sin and we are not. And we don't come into your presence this morning with our heads held high as if we could merit your favor or your love. But we come humbly before you, recognizing that we need your grace. We need your favor that we could never deserve. And we thank you that your love reaches out to us today. And we ask that you would help us to turn away now from everything that is unworthy of you. We confess our feelings before you. We seek your cleansing. And we ask now that you would just send the Holy Spirit among us. And the Spirit would come to open our hearts and minds to all that you would say to us and to all that you would want to give us. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Hi, right, boys and girls, good to uh, see you in church this morning. Again, give me a wave so I know where all of you are. There's some up in the gallery, some at the side over here, and at the back. Okay, have you ever had somebody jump out at you? Can we put that up? And frighten you? Ever happened to you? Happens to me all the time. I'm, I'm slightly deaf now. This is what happens when you get older. Your hearing goes, and uh, sometimes I'm out walking, and somebody will be jogging behind me, and I don't hear them till they pass me, and then I go, oh, you've scared the life out of me. And of course, there are all kinds of things that make us uh, frightened. Aren't there, boys and girls? Well, here's, here's a couple I've got, okay? Over here can be frightened of the dark, can't we? Sometimes when the lights go out, it can be really quite uh, scary. Or we can be frightened of a little mouse. Who's frightened of a little mouse? Come on, all the ladies. Time to get your hands up. My wife is frightened of mice. I remember many years ago, 
I came home one evening at, at 10 o'clock and uh, all the lights in the manse were on, every single one of them. I drove around the back of the house and I came in through the utility room and into the kitchen and I shouted, is there anybody about? Not a word. Went into the living room, nobody there. Went into the other room, nobody there. Went up the stairs. Is there anybody there? And this little voice came from one of the bedroom. We're in here. And there was Adrian with the three girls in the one bedroom. There was no heat in the house. She said to me, we've been here from seven o'clock at night. I was downstairs and I saw it and it was this size. And we've been in the bedroom ever since. It was a mess. The thing is, hands up all the men who are frightened of mice. Come on now. Yes, yes, I know you, John Black, yeah. So, yeah, mice. What about, what, what are the other things that people are frightened about? Who's frightened of spiders? Yeah, yeah, when my girls grew up, you know, even, even though they were teenagers, Sometimes I would hear this loud scream from the bedroom. And I would wonder, what's wrong? What's happened? Oh, Daddy, there's a spider in the room. I said, okay, I'll kill it. Oh, no, 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 don't kill it. Just So, spiders. And here's the thing. Some people are even frightened of clowns. There are all kinds of things, boys and girls, that make us frightened and some of them aren't, aren't funny at all it's, 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 it's scary to be frightened of, of the dark and, and sometimes we can be frightened of other people there are lots of things that frighten us and of course w when we're frightened what, 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 what we often do is we go to our, our mums and dads because we know they're the ones who can help us and they can be with us. But sometimes our mums and dads aren't there. Boys and, girls. and in moments like that, when we are frightened, it's really good to remember that God is with us. And whatever is frightening us, he is able to help us. I remember when I was um, at, at primary school, I had some um, boys that I used to meet when I um, was walking home, and uh, they would have um, bullied me, and I would have been really frightened of them. And, and if I saw them in the distance, I would have gone in the opposite direction. But when my dad was with me, I was frightened of those boys because I knew my dad was after me. And God is our heavenly father. And when we are trusting in Jesus, we know that he will be with us and look after us and give us the strength even to face the things that frighten us. Now, we're going to sing your hymn, and then after that, you get to go out to Sunday school or children's church, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to sing your hymn. I think it's I Have Decided. So it, again, we stand for this, and we get our masks on, and we give it a real good go.
Boys and girls, you can go out to children's church, Sunday school. Well, after singing that, you should be going out like this. Woo! So before we turn to God's word, let, let's pray together. And in our prayers this morning, we want to remember um, the continuing concerns that there are in the world about the conflict uh, surrounding Russia and Ukraine, and the possibility of, of war there with all the horrors that that brings. Lord, we pray for all the negotiations that are taking place right now between the nations and the nation of Russia. We are concerned about the warnings that we hear from uh, world leaders about the possible conflict in Europe. We realize what a terrible step that would be. We recognize the destruction and the death that would come in its wake. And so we are praying for those negotiations and praying for a peaceful resolution to the difficulties that exist there in Eastern Europe. Give wisdom and courage and good sense to all involved in that situation. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the lessening of restrictions in our own country. But we realize that the virus continues to spread and many are being affected by it. We pray for the health services. We pray for those who are suffering from COVID at home or in hospital. We ask for the strength, healing that so many desperately need. And we continue to pray for Jeff and Anne Marie and their family in all the difficulties that they are facing at this time. We just simply ask for your strength for them, for your grace. And we pray that it would not be too long until Jeff is back among us and leading uh, this congregation uh, in the ways of the Lord. May they know your presence and your peace in a very real way. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. going to uh, read today from the book of Joshua and reading from chapter 1 and the first uh, nine verses of that um, particular chapter. And we hear God's word together. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert in Lebanon 
and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead this people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I not commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you you go. I don't know if there are any Trekkies among us. Uh, Now, form Trekkies are um, avid followers of Star Trek. Uh, It was actually first aired in the United Kingdom on the 12th of July, 1969. And I have to confess that I loved the original series. You know where you're, there was Captain Kirk and Spock and Bones and Scotty and Zulu and, and, and the rest. At, at that time, space exploration was in its infancy. Those of you who are old enough, like me, will have sat glued to your television screens on Christmas Eve 1968 when Apollo 8 became the first human craft to orbit. And Star Trek appealed to my boyish sense of adventure. I I especially liked the words spoken by the original uh, Captain Kirk, William Shatner, at the beginning of every program, Space, the Final Frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise its five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. How exciting to step out into the unknown. Now, with the benefit of more years of experience, I realized my boyish attitude to the unknown was a romantic one. The unknown in life is more likely to frighten us than to excite us. We find the unknown very uncomfortable. It exposes our vulnerability, impresses upon us the uncertainty of life, and reveals to us a truth about life that we don't like to acknowledge, that much of life is outside of our control. And hasn't this been our experience in the last two years? This time two years ago, we could never have imagined that a virus would bring our world to a virtual standstill. Closed borders, closed businesses and schools, closed churches, confined to our homes. And a whole host of new procedures, hand washing, wearing face masks, being vigilant about cleaning surfaces. They all become a normal part of daily life. And there's experience of loss, the loss of freedom, loss of employment, loss of human contact, loss of health, and in too many loss of life. It has been 
a terrifying and an uncertain time. And what is everybody's desire? We want things to go back to what they were before. Back to what we knew and what we were comfortable with. But if you think about it, life is a continual voyage into the unknown. From the moment we arrive on earth until the moment we leave it, we're on a journey into the unknown. We start to leave the baby stage, utterly dependent on our parents when we take those first steps of independence by learning to walk. We move into childhood, learning more about ourselves and, and the world. Then there comes the adolescent years we're discovering ourselves and relationships and then we come into the adult stage where we're finding employment perhaps meeting a partner for life then into the family stage where we're becoming mums and dads and all the challenges that that brings and then you reach my stage of retirement and old age and there's the loss of mental and physical powers the loss of health, and then we face that great final unknown death itself. And what difference does our faith in Jesus make in all these different stages as we step into the unknown? How is it meant to help us better face the challenges of life that will inevitably come our way. In our reading, Joshua and the people of Israel were being called by God to step into the unknown. Moses, the great leader of the people, was dead. He had led the people out of slavery and Egypt. He had watched over them for 40 years as they wandered in the desert. The baton of leadership had now been passed to Joshua. He had been Moses' lieutenant for many, many years. He was now charged with doing what Moses had not done. Lead the people into the promised land. And we are told in this passage how he felt at that particular moment. And he was terrified. In the space of five verses, three times God said to him, Be strong and courageous. And Joshua's fears were perfectly natural. It's not hard to guess what he was thinking. How could I ever fill Moses' shoes? I lead this people to take possession of a land that I know nothing about. And maybe you know exactly how Moses feels. You're facing something brightens you and you're not sure how you will deal with it or face it but the first thing that I want you to notice here is that the presence of fear in such moments doesn't mean the absence of faith Joshua was a man of faith he is included in the list of the heroes of faith in Hebrews 11. And we mustn't think if we are fearful or anxious that we are lacking in faith. This is a, a common mistake many Christians make. And at such moments, they chide themselves for their lack of faith, which makes their difficult 
and situation even harder to deal with. We need to realize the opposite of faith is not fear. The opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is unbelief. That refusal to trust in the Lord and his word. And faith in Jesus does not we will be without fear. Instead, what it does is to enable us not to be limited or confined by our fears, but to overcome them. You see, the Christian life is a life of faith. It begins by faith as we surrender our lives to Jesus, and it continues by faith. We are commanded in the New Testament to walk by faith and not by sight. Walking by sight is what comes naturally to us. We respond to the challenges of life by what we see and know and feel. And when we are facing the unknown, all we see are the difficulties, the problems, the challenges. No wonder we're fearful. We need to learn to walk by faith. And walking by faith doesn't mean denying the challenges of life. It means remembering there's more to life than what we see. We have a greater resource to rely upon than simply what this world has to offer. We have the resources of God that enable us to look at the challenges of life through new eyes. And we need to remember that faith is like a muscle. It only grows by testing. We want what is comfortable. God encourages us to step out into the unknown with him, even though it can be frightening and uncomfortable in order that we might grow in him. And in those uncomfortable moments, what so often is our prayer? Lord, get me out of here. Let me return to what I know and what I'm comfortable with. And perhaps in those moments, what God is actually saying to us is, I have you there that you might trust in me. Purpose in having you is that you might grow in your faith. You know, one thing to believe the truth of God in our heads, but it is something quite different to experience it in our lives. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to go from saying, I believe this to be true, to I know this is true because I have experienced it in my life for myself. And God continually pushes us into the unknown because he wants us to discover for ourselves more and more of what he can do in us and through us. Is he calling you step in to the unknown? Maybe for the first time to 
to, to, to surrender your life to Jesus, to, to put your trust in him. Or, or maybe he's asking of you some new act of obedience. And when you think about it, it's frightening and it's scary. But as you take the step to trust in him, you will discover for yourself that he is sufficient for all your needs. Now, you, you might be thinking to yourself, well, it's, it's all very well for you to stand up there in the front uh, and, and talk to us about um, faith and, and, and to tell us uh, about uh, its benefits and, and to encourage us to be, to be strong in the Lord. But you don't know the problems or the obstacles or the disappointments I'm facing. You don't know how it's been for me that my prayers seem to go unanswered or the road ahead seems to be blocked for me. What am I doing such times? How, how, how am I to be strong? Well, when God calls Joshua to be strong, he's not asking him to muster this strength from within himself. And when he calls us to be strong, he's not asking us to muster within us something that we don't have. Instead, he gives us reasons why we can react in this way. He makes promises to us. And look at the promises that he made to Joshua. Verse 3, I will give you uh, every place where where you set your foot. Verse 5, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Verse 9, do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you. And when fear threatens to overwhelm us, what we need to do is to look away from our difficulties and to look to the promises that God has given us to encourage our trust in him. And one of the the simplest and yet the most profound promises that he makes to us when we are stepping into the unknown it is those familiar words I will never leave you nor forsake you you see we're never alone in our walk with Jesus he is behind us He goes before us. He walks beside us. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, what what does that mean in practical terms? Uh, When when our girls were were young, uh, we often had holidays uh, to France. Uh, And that meant uh, driving from here, um, getting the ferry over to Scotland, driving the whole way down England, uh, and then getting the ferry into France and driving down from France uh, to our destination. And, and, and when, when my girls were doing that, they, they never worried about whether we would get to our destination. They, they never worried whether they would have enough food or drink. They, they never thought, uh, where would dad get petrol for the car? Or uh, where would he get the money to pay? for the petrol. They, they never thought about um, you know, all those kind of practical things. Where will we stay for the night? You see, the reason they didn't do that was because that was their parents' responsibility. The only thing that they did, and you know kids will always do this, you were only a mile from home when they said, are we there yet? You know? Um, 
But is, is, you see, that's, that's why we're like with God. We, we get into the unknown and, and we're, we're immediately asking, well, we're there yet? But we need to remember that he is our heavenly father. We trust him to provide for all our needs. Uh, when I was uh, in Ballinure, or not in Ballinure, in First Shards, um, I, the, the congregation were always waiting to hear my stories uh, about me getting lost uh, in all my walking trips. The, the stories are, 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 are many. But in recent years, I, I, I have gone to America uh, and there, uh, and we have done several walking trips together. Uh, and when I go to America, I, n- I never worry about getting lost. My, my friend has a, a great sense of direction. He also has one of those GPS devices. So I never think about where we're going. I just follow his when we step out into the unknown we just need to trust in Jesus and to allow him to direct our path so here's where we find the courage in those difficult moments it's through the promises of God But in closing, those promises call for a response from us. Verse 7, be careful to obey all the law my servant Jesus gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or to left. If we are to know the blessing of the promises, then we need to walk in the presence of the Lord. And and here's the problem for many of us. We want the blessings, but we want them on our terms. And we don't benefit from them because we are ignoring the Lord's word. You know, think of a child with um, uh, their dad and uh, and they're in the shopping center. uh, and, And the dad says to the child, now stay close to me. But the child disobeys. The child wanders off, gets separated uh, from their father, can't find their father. And and what inevitably happens? The child becomes anxious and fearful. They lose the reassurance of the father's presence. And it's only as they return to him that that presence is restored. It is no different for you and me. If we're not obeying the Father, if we're not staying close to him, then we're going to miss out on all the blessings that his presence Staring into the unknown. He was frightened. He was really frightened. But he drew strength and encouragement through the promises of God. In your unknown moments, the Lord wants you to learn to trust in And that trust is encouraged as you look to his promises. His promise to be with you. His promise to provide for you. His promise to direct your path. Let's join together to pray. We pray together.
Heavenly Father, uh, you know each of our hearts. You know that there are some of us today who are fearful and anxious. We are stepping into the unknown. We don't know how we're going to deal with it. We don't know what awaits us. But help us to know that when we're ready to trust you, you will be with us. You will provide for us. You will direct us. And you will make yourself known to us in an even greater way. And in those moments when we would want to cry out, just get me out of here. Help us to draw courage and strength in the promises that you have made to us in your word. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We turn to our Closing, Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it. together. Lord, we thank you for these words that we have been singing, reminding us that you are Lord. You are the victor over sin and death and the devil. We thank you that we can trust you with everything in our lives. And we pray now that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit would be with us all. Amen. And again, we encourage you to keep on your seats till your words direct you out.